One of the most beautiful mitzvah that Yah commands unto us. That He grants us the audience that we may lift Him up to praise Him, to esteem Him, and to exalt Him. A nation that He has called, He is the one that has erected this nation to make them Yahshua, to make them straight. Yet he gives us this occasion to come before him. And then if we have the living Ruach, we have the living Ruach, then we shall hudu, we shall praise him with great excitement. And so I'm privileged to be here today, Yisrael. The day shall prevail against us whereby there will be no need to teach, to esteem the Torah. It should be a process daily among his arm, his nation, that the Torah should be taught. It should be taught in every aspect of our lives, whether we're laboring. It should be the constant on our minds. And so when we gather in the Bayat of Yah, you will only need to hear the Torah read because there will be this spontaneous action that we have seen, the praises, the esteeming, for I long for that day. For that day shall prevail upon this people we shall see the beauty of that soon. I'm not going to be loquacious today, to be talkative. I want to go directly into the teaching. That my heart is set to deal with on this Shabbat. You are friends that are listening. We greet you all in the most excellent name of Yahshua HaMashiach. In honor unto our Zachim and all of Yisraya, wherever you are, the greetings of his Shalom, his covenant of peace with you. And so I want to talk because it is vitally important that the nation prepare a nation. The nation must be prepared. Now, I know what I said that I would teach on last week, but this is vital. Because I received a call on last week, right before the morning prayer. And the person that called me, called me from Belize. If you understand any geographics, Belize is on the southern end of Mexico as you are traveling from Mexico past Guatemala, Honduras, going down into South America, Brazil, and those nations. So I received a call the other morning, and the person on the line from Belize says to me, Riach David, I call you with warnings, a preparation unto Yah. And so I listened to this individual as this person retorted and to express unto me the very importance of this warning and to adhere to what they were saying. And so after I finished listening to the person, I said to the individual, what are or what is the specifics of what shall be? And then this individual began to give me the same type of rhetoric that you find from these YouTube CVS prophets and these Walgreen and Walmart prophets, these super low prices, dollar general prophets, 
And I said to the individual, I don't receive a damn word you said. And so that individual was somewhat startled at my response. I want to inject this before I proceed. Here it is a nation like Belize, whereby the people in that nation, they are only, they are dull, they are poor, and they are crippled in the sense that they are suppressed and oppressed by the tyranny of their government, government officials. They rob them of essentials. So I say to this individual, why not warn the nation of Belize? You warning me? Yes. You must get gas. I said a damn lie. You must get food. A damn lie. I don't buy it. I want to ask us all these questions. I don't receive these nickel dime Walmart prophets or prophetess. Why would y'all put such and exact such pressure upon a poor daughter of Tizayon there in the city of New York? That hell, she cannot buy gas. She gets barely enough food stamps to feed her brood of five, six youngins. And yet there is a beauty in her perseverance. As the battles attack her mind and tries her, she continues to press on. To please Yah in every regard when she hears the truth that she tries to strive and teach her brood of siblings that same wisdom. And so you tell me, you wicked ones of darkness, you drugstore, Walmart, Walgreen prophets, you YouTubers. That Yah is saying to a wicked nation whereby the rich man can buy a tanker of gasoline. Whereby the rich man can hoard up quality foods. Whereby a poor daughter of Tizayon that's there in St. Louis, Missouri. And she's living in a rundown shack. She is not taking the government's assistance and she is striving with great tenacity to obey the charge. When she hears the Torah of Yah spoken, she bows, she weeps with great supplication because it convinces her and convicts her that without the Naham, the great tenderness and the plentifulness of the kindness of Yah's pity, she knows she cannot make it. She cannot weather the onslaught against her, even the drive for her own lust and the battle with no head, no husband man, and to keep herself clean and unspotted from the world, and you call me to tell me that Yah says by gas and by food prepare for the great misery that shall prevail in this nation and not only in this nation but every nation and the rich and the powerful do not need any kind of spiritual intervention because they have power to buy and money at their dispense. You tell me that the warning for me is no different than the warning for the bath of Sihom there in Calcutta, India, or even in Belize. You sell your dollar merchandise to those that will buy it. I will not buy it. 
It's a damn lie. Prepare, nation of Yah. It is one thing that if we study Torah and the Navi'in, the prophets, the messengers, they were sent out what Torah calls Naha, the warning. And when one sends out the warning, they always send out light. That is what the Naha is. It is light. For his mitzvah, they are a near unto our feet, a lamp. And his Torah is light unto the derek or the way of the truth of Torah. And he tells us that reproof of instructions, the Musa, the counsel of Yah, that is the way, that is the producer of chai, life, a living uh, organism by the power of the Ruach HaKodash. And that living organism is the power of Torah, the mind, the Laba, the mind of Yah, the Rus in the bosom of a nation, a people that possess the ma'o, the light shines so brilliantly. Did they rejoice in afflictions, in sufferings, great agony, pains, because they know that they are Abba, as they would say, he is able. Prepare, nation of Yah's people. The Naha is the light that goes out. I didn't receive that dark counsel. I didn't receive that light. And so when I began to reprove that one, they immediately said to me, you have a nice day. I said, I was expecting that. I'm not surprised at your sudden disconnect. So I will not greet them and pour out the riches of Yah upon them because it is the power of the spirit that is wreaking havoc in the minds of the people today. It is this Nechash. It is a mind that is defiance of Torah. It is a mind that has been shaped to do one thing, to save one's own crop state of being, uh, that they can continue uh, in the way of their crop life uh, and their lifestyles uh, that denounces the power of Torah. There's no light in them. There is no love of Yah in them. Uh, there's no Yahshua. They may have their damn Christ and their wicked Jesus. But they don't have your sure Hamashiach. So I rejected the counsel. I will not receive it. I speak to you, nation. We must prepare. And the Torah speaks. There are superlatives and verbs that express certain preparations. One is Asa. To make sure that one is fashion, walking in the correction of Almighty Yah, that one is upright. And there is another called Kunya, to make one ready to prepare one's heart. In all of these splendid superlatives, I want to deal with one that expresses the preparation, the preparing. How we prepare. It is called halats. I want to define it according to the ancient tongue of the Hebraic people from the lips of those that spoke in the Ethiopic language or Ugaritic. I want to define it that way. Is that all right? 
Are you trying to sound like a scholar? No, I'm trying to teach us wisdom. We've had enough of these damn jackasses and clowns. This is what halats mean. Oh, I got this down because I want to make sure that it's right. And I want to give us one katuv, one verse, that express the power and the summation of this word halats. That as I teach today, you can identify it throughout the construct of how we, what should we do to prepare. When Yah, Naha, he warns his people, the wicked cannot grab hold of that warning to sustain life. And so the warning that this individual gave to me, well, hell, if you got money, you can buy gas. You can buy food and store it up. I want that meat. Whereby David said to you, feeds me. Akal. Let me consume and eat until uh, I want no more. You can't get full. It doesn't weigh you down. This is what the word Halats, it is defined by our forefathers. When it was used, people would understand what it means. Halats is to make strong, to fashion one to be strong, to make strong. For us to brace ourselves up, to brace up, it defines to be invigorated by what shall be uh, what shall come to pass it gives us a descriptive of withdrawal withdraw yourself from this world do not give yourself over unto the folly of this world and above all it means to equip oneself to fight to equip oneself to fight. How can we with our small penury of financial strength fight against the very greediness of the wicked to raise prices beyond the poor daughter of Tizion there in Atlanta, Georgia, living in conditions that are truly not fit for human, and yet her beauty of her ruach is expressed in all that she does with her babies in her home. How do you tell her to buy gas? How do you tell her to buy food? I was in one of the discount, they call it, vineyards the other day. And I saw a 25-pound bag of pinto beans, whereby I can recall you could get that bag for $7.99. Now the bag is nearly $20 for one bag. How do you tell a mother who's making $7 an hour to buy that, to prepare? You are a liar. You're of your father, Hashatan. You have the spirit of Shatan, of evil wickedness. You have the mind of Nahash. And I will not buy it. I will not accept it. I will not receive it from these Walgreen prophets. Or any man. Not that. It is to equip ourselves to fight. Uh, and above all, we must be armed. We must have on the cloak a sadiq. We must have our breastplate and our helmet of salvation, our feet shod, and above all, the sword of the ruach. We must be equipped to fight. How do we prepare? Has Yah forsaken his people? 
that he has given them into the hand of the spirit of mercantile. That the only way they are going to escape the very agony that shall befall the nations is to store food. We need to store the food of Yah, his words, uh, in our hearts that we sin not against Yah. And so these individuals that are purporting these lies and telling the people to put back, for this shall be the substance of your life, they're damn liars. And I challenge any of the beasts. They're liars. They're corrupt. For the king shall eat your food, the worm shall, in the best state of your preserving. They shall find ways to penetrate. We must build ourselves up in Imona. There's only one way to prepare Yisrael. Prepare nation of Yah. We all are aware of the messenger called Baruch. Yeremiah, as Yah speaks to this man in Torah, and to get a great illustration of the beauty of Baruch, I don't want you to turn there now. But in Yeremiah chapter 44, it gives you the distinct nature of this prominent messenger among the nation of Yisrael. But he speaks so profoundly unto the nation out of the book of... Uh, before I read that, I want to give you this one verse that enraptures the words halats, Psalms to Helium. In Psalm chapter 119 and 153. This is what the Melech, the king, said unto Yah. Psalms 119 verse 153. Was he not a powerful, rich man? Not only did he have the Ashir, the riches of substance and property, he had the Ashir. The riches of the knowledge of Torah that he could count. And the prophets whereby he could call upon them. And they were set the matters in order for him. But this is his cry unto Yah. He says, I want you to consider my own need. He did not say, deliver me from them, consider them. Consider my great misery. And my depression and the pain of the poverty that resonates from my ruach. Consider it. Give accountability to it, Yah. He says, and I want you to halats. Give me the power to fight. Equip me from my enemies. Give me the weaponry of Torah to fight. Against the scourge of darkness and hell that tries to rip my mind away from the beauty of your Torah. He says unto Yah and Halats, deliver, equip me, give me the power to fight, Almighty Yah. He says, invigorates me. Give me the energy and the strength. Give me the high year, the life, and the power to resist. He says, deliver me. And this is the calculation of it all. He says, for I do not forget your Torah. I do not forget the light. That is what Zacher is. Zaha is that the light goes out. That the light shines from that one that warns you. When one warns us, there must be a light shining from that man. One must have the light of the Torah in the bosom. Damn your Christ. Damn your Christ. Damn him. One must have the light. 
And these nickel-dime dollar general prophets, they don't have a damn thing. They buy anything, repackage it, and try to sell it. They don't have a thing. You can't find anything decent in Walmart. And nothing you buy out of Walgreen or Dollar General has any kind of longevity to it at all. Periods. So that is what halat is. Deliver. Invigorate me. Make me strong. Cause invigoration of what? I do not forget Torah. I do not forget the Torah. Invigorate me in the midst of my own knee, my depression, my misery, the affliction. You got to tell a daughter of Tizayon, there in Los Angeles, California, that cannot even buy decent bread to buy gas. Hell, she used the public transportation. She has no grocery stores in her community anyway. You telling her that? You are a liar, you beast of hell. You are the embodiment of Nahash, one that defies the invigoration of Torah. David said, This is what invigorates me. This is what assures me. This is how my mind is set. To battle against the forces of Nahash of darkness. We must prepare Yisraya, but I will give us enlightenment as to how. Here in the book of Baruch, second Baruch, second Baruch, he is the blessed one of Yah. This is the only way you're going to prepare. Second Baruch, chapter 32, verse 1. He's talking to you. He says, you. You, however, despite all circumstances, he says, if you prepare, if you allow the strength to cool, to allow your heart and your mind to be established firmly, this is the halats of Yah. He said, if you however prepare your minds, or leba, the place where intelligence and spiritual matters are, are carried out to understand the life of that, we must first begin in this wicked mind. And we began by, as Shaul says, letting the same mind that was in Yoshua HaMashiach it must be in us. He said if we would prepare our minds uh, to soak into our minds uh, the peri or the fruit of the Torah. We prepare our minds to sow every kind of damnable folly and wickedness of lies. We must begin by preparing uh, our minds. We must sow the zira, the seed of Torah. We must be able to hear Yisra'ah. So we prepare our minds, our ru'ah, that which cause life uh, to emanate from us. It is your mind to cause death to breathe in you. It is your mind that conjure up some of the most wicked things uh, that one could ever consider. It is your mind that spew out lies and corruption uh, and every kind of vile thing there is. We must be God in our labor. And I'm not in the seats of strength, intelligentsia. And we prepare our mind to sow. And it begins with plowing and if you want to sow, you must begin to plow. We prepare our minds to sow into what? It's the Torah. So the Torah, we must prepare here. We must prepare our hearts. We must prepare our minds. We must prepare our nephesh, our whole of a being. It begins here. It begins here. It doesn't begin in this muscle here. It begins here. 
and we must prepare our minds. If the person had called me and said, prepare your mind, then I would have allowed them to talk even further. When they said to me, buy gas and food, I knew that this was a trick of hell. For if any man seek to save his own life, he's going to lose it. Why should I seek to save this damn flesh that is greedy, out of control, that is lazy? Why? We must be gotten with the preparation of our minds. You can have all the food in the world, you're not going to appreciate it. You can drive all over the United States of America, you will still complain. We must be gotten by preparing our minds, Yisrael, to do what? To sow in them the fruit of the Torah. If we do that, if we prepare our minds to sow the fruit of the Torah, he says, Yah shall. Not that Yah might, but he gives us a confirmation and assurance. He says, Yah shall protect you uh, in time which Yah the Mighty One uh, shall shake the entire creation. He is not just going to shake America. He's going to shake Belize. He's going to shake Honduras. Honduras. He's going to shake Kenya. He's going to shake Nigeria for the wickedness that is purported in these nations. He's going to shake the entire creation. And the only way we can prepare for that, that we prepare ourselves by sowing the fruit of Torah in our minds. We have sown enough bullshitting in our mind. This Gelusa. I will, as the world would say, simply this shit. It's not funny what I say. I say Geluth in the Hebraic expression. Sure, a Geluth, sure. Bull. Shits. I, I don't care how you think of my expressions. You can listen to every wicked thing there is. And you get trouble because of the way I talk. We are shown everything that is vile and corrupt in our minds. We have not shown the fruit of Torah. And we are full of it. We don't want to identify the insufficiency of the love of Torah and us, uh, so we pretend with this false, fictitious uh, fronting. Uh, we're lawyers. We must be gone there. Gone you there in Belize. If you listen, I don't receive your prophecy. It's a lie. It's a lie. Bring this whore down, young. My Hamashiach tell me many are the only, the affliction of the Sadiq. But Yah delivers them out of them all. And if we saw the Ruach or the life of the Peri, the fruit of the seed of Torah in our minds, even Baruch before Yahshua, this living power of Torah, was expressed unto us, he says, uh, when Yah shakes the whole creation, he's going to protect you. Why? Well, because the Melech Ayah is in camp about them that fear Yare, Yah. And so the message for the wicked and to save his flesh is to buy the abundance of things to assist you in adversity. And it says to a poor daughter of Tizayon, you have nothing. There's nothing that will deliver you unless you buy food. These drugstore liars, these Walgreen prophets, they're full of wickedness. They're rotten men. They're liars. Behold the Torah of Yah in unrighteousness. They allow every kind of seductive spirit to creep in. So they're saying that to the whore, the pedophile, Stack up and you'll be all right. Yah's going to shake this wicked world that has sown the seed of 
Nahash, defying the Torah. We find it in our sons and our daughters, and above all, we find a great residue in the remnant in us. It's in our bosom, Yisrael, yeah, because we will not allow the Torah of Yah to be sown into our bosom. We don't have the, the essence of prayer like David. I want to show you one of his prayers here in the book of Debri, first Debri, Chayim. In the book of First Chronicles, chapter 29. I want to show you this great prayer of David. He understood that his time was approaching rapidly. He had prepared all things. He had kund. He had established all things for his son Shalom to build the house. This was his prayer for Shalom, for Yisrael. That we may finish the works of Yah. We are building a house, a bayat, whereby the fruit of Yah, of Torah, are preserved. And that's why when one had an abundance, they built barns to put the abundant. We have a house. We are the house of the Ruach. We are the bayat. We have been built by the precious Yah, the hand of Yah. He has placed a precious stone uh, that uh, we can plumb everything from that stone. And Yoshua is that precious stone. And we that want to build in our own definity of ways of building, we reject that cornerstone. Uh, we reject the tenets of Torah. And we began to build upon the principles of our own lies, uh, in our own corruption. Uh, and the house is coming down. Great shall be the fall of your house. It's coming down. It's coming down to the ground. And no one is going to save you. No one. We can pretend all we want to. And continue in our foolish ways and our superficiality that we're not genuine and real. I, I hate that about this nation of people. So superficial. And so disingenuous. That's why I don't integrate myself with many men. I like genuine men. I like the genuineness of the Baptist I own. I hate a fake Jezebel. I hate that. That's why our daughters are messed up today. It is from the shad, the titty of the mother, she teaches love to love and to honor even the man. She imparts that into the baby's belly, the betem, from her titty. It expends the sweetness of her great fragrance because of her submissiveness unto a man. And a great love and this apparition for that man. And now they spill some of the vileness of corruption. And the damn babies are wicked when they're born. You see it on them. Find you some weak, wall green prophet, get away. And don't call me with your immature child reproof because I don't receive one damn word. How about that? I shall, my friend. She is the place of beauty. She teaches the young boy how to love those that Yah grant or will grant unto him because she and her disposition exemplifies the beauty of a nurturing mother. And so the Avat comes home and reinforces that and the son sees the beauty of his strength because it's tender, it's loving, it's kindness. For he doesn't have to come home and raise hell because she's slothful as hell and wicked. And this woman of your shoe, she's a wicked whore. We love every kind of whore. We don't love truth. I don't give a damn if you don't appreciate me. Makes no difference. 
is one thing that in all of my ignorance, if the Ruach has ever caused an unction to come upon me mightily, I will never forget some 30 years ago. As I sat in this meeting, I had labored during the heat of the summer. Everywhere I went telling people, passing out flyers. We did not have the use of media like we do today. And the promises we shall come. And the meeting began, there were only less than what's here. And my heart was so broken. I was so sad. I thought I had disappointed the one I was working with. And if there was ever life that rose in my bosom to reassure me, son, this way had no idea what the Ruach had caused the draw from the belly of birth from me. It was there. Before I was ever created in my mother's womb, Yah had put it there. You understand? In this way, you're not going to find many. Don't be discouraged. And that strengthened my loins that night. And I've never been discouraged. A few people. You can. I will not. Navi speaks to us so profoundly here in First Chronicles chapter 29. Look what he says in verse 11. This is so beautiful. He identifies Almighty Yahweh. He says, yours. You are the possessor. You possess. He says, yours are. He says, not only is it the greatness, uh, but the Gidera. He said, yours, O Maria, is greatness. There's great dignity and honor and strength with Yah. Because his words, his dabarim, his words, his promises, they're genuine. We may break our promises, but he never break his promises. He said, with you, O Maria, it's greatness. And also there is koach, there is power. And he says, there is tifra, there's a beauty uh, that even the sun cannot express. Uh, he said, the light of your beauty, even in the midst of the great darkness uh, of the earth, uh, the moon cannot express that. He said, with you, there is beauty. And he says, also, there is teshua, victory. That's with Yah. That is what is with you. He says, and also there is a great grandeur. There is a beauty that is so refined. There is a dignity that is so beautiful that people don't understand. For all that is in the Shemaim and in the earth, all, not some, the gas belong to Yah. Every stone, every leaf that falls belongs to Almighty Yahweh. He said, for all that is in the Shemayam and in the earth is yours. It belongs to Yah. He said, all belongs to you. He says, yours is the kingdom. Thy kingdom come, the prayer, the pala of Yisrael. He said, oh Yah. He says, and you are exalted as head above all. You are the rush above all in all of this creation. You are the rush. You are the head. You are the one that invigorates and creates. You are the one that causes it to come alive. He also says to Yah in verse 12, because Davi was a wealthy man. He was a man to bring the whole house of Yisrael into the compliance of Torah that they were Ichads. And he says to Yah, he said, both riches and great honor, it comes from you. There is no riches upon the face of the earth that has not come from Yah. The ores, they belong to him. Every tree that you see, every seed, it all belongs to Almighty Yah. And the wicked, the spirit of Nahash, that's why Shatan's had to have all the day you defy Yah. You got to create the own substance of your riches. And when she defied Yah, she opened the wound to death, uh, darkness to every kind of vile, corrupt seed there is. Uh, 
And we are the product of that. We just lock the oak tree that drops the acorn, acorn, that they would grow if you did not just eradicate them, they will grow. And so the seed that we are allowed to fall in our lives is growing. The weeds, the thorns, and the thistles prepare halat to be invigorated because you got gas. To be invigorated because you got food stored back, you're not going to eat those things because uh, most things are so perishable. Uh, the only thing you can really store with some kind of longevity is a little corn, a little rice, and a little beans, and you don't want that. You certainly aren't going to can anything. I don't buy your prophecy. All the riches come from Yah. He says, you reign over all, uh, and in your hand is power and might. And in your hand, it is to make great and to give strength to all. It is the hand of Yah that will make us great. It is the hand of Yah that gives us strength. Your shoe is the right hand, the yard of Yah. He is the straight truth of Almighty Yahweh. And He has given us this right hand. He has given us the wisdom and revelation of his Torah. We don't want to sow that into our minds. We sow every kind of damn foul thing in our minds. Lies and corruption. We set down in our minds to be fair with every kind of damnable spirit there is. We set in the community of faggots and dogs and pedophiles and we enjoy their damn company. Can I tell you this, my friend? I got married quite young. And I knew one thing, that when I left my mother's house, I would never. She says to me one day, I would never return. You always got a home here. I said, no, ma'am. Not for me. This is not my home. I will never return. Oh, baby, you can. No. I said, take my wife. We'll sleep in a van in the woods. i never return here. I meant that. And don't take it back, because I am a man. I'm a man. Can I proceed? I will, my friend. I'm going to Erin. He says, come on, I'm going to bowl. I'm coming in. Don't worry. I'm coming into every heart. Ah. You are the one that made great, you give strength to all. Look at what this man says. He says, now therefore, almighty Yah, we know that you are uh, Abba. You keep us with your tender kindness. You feed us. And we know your beauty because the sparrow eats neither sow nor plow, but yet they reap of the abundance. I watched the crows kill our corn just going behind us and plucking up the seeds. I watched the raccoons eat our melons until their bellies are full. Got something for you next year, Mr. Dirty Raccoon. He says, now therefore, O Maria, you know you are Abba. We toda, we yada. We give you thanksgiving with praises. Hell, we don't even want to praise him. This staunch, wicked generation, this dignified, uncoop Jezebel spirit. He said, now I give what I bestow upon you. I not than to die. To da, to da, Yahweh. To da, to da, Yahweh. Oh, I bless you, my bar, for one more day. Oh, you grant unto me all oh, the power of life in Yahshua. Hamashiach. No, I'm not going to never sing it the way you sing it. Because I know that it is some kind of learnt form you sing format yeah. 
I don't sing like that. I sing from here. From my liver. From my heart. Oh, thank you, thank you, Yahshua. Blessed be your name. Oh, do that, do that, Yahweh, for your shoe. Oh, I'm blessed, that rich name of Yahshua. I'm Mashiach. I bless that name. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm going to preach, teach, hallow, yell. I'm going to do that today. Now, therefore, Ya Ar Abba, we told you, and we hallel your beautiful name. It's a damn shame that there is no hallel. David said his name was Yafef. Yafef. It's such a beautiful name. Beautiful is that name. Drives away all of my pains, or what I call on the end. It makes me whole. Tears and pains overtake me. Sometimes I don't know which way to turn, but I call on that name. It heals me. Healing in that name. Oh, there's Rafa in that name. Oh, the beautiful name of Yah is not beautiful to this damn wicked generation. It's not a beautiful sound. There's something twisted in your damn mind when you hear someone say Hallel, uh, and your mind is not prepared to sow that seed uh, into your mind. You are uncomfortable with that. You're a twisted damn beast. Come on and challenge me, all right? He said the name was Yafet. It's beautiful. Beautiful is the name. The name of Yah. It flows from my land. Day and night. When I'm asleep. Arise by his touch and cry hallelujah to the beautiful name of Yah. So into my mind, the living Torah, Yah, oh, bless your messenger that he may talk to me. Meet your healing yam. I need it in my mind. Oh, heal me, oh, young. For that name is beautiful. We despise that name. We don't want to hear the beauty of that name. We get abrasive and offended when I say, damn every God and damn Jesus Christ. I intend for you to hear me, my friend. Chill down. He goes on, he says, I shall hallel your beautiful name. Verse 14, he said, but who am I? What am I? But a repulsive piece of rotten flesh that shall die and stink. It's going to rot and the maggots are going to take root in that flesh. That's right. Going to eat on it. The maggots, the skin worms. They're going to eat it up. Within a few minutes, when you're dead, the maggots began to set the flies flying you. Our Akshim reminded us why should we die before our time? Be not given too much wickedness. Why die ye before your time? Muth, why die prematurely? You die because you're not able to receive the counsel of Yah. The soundness of his wisdom. But who am I? And what are these people you have put under my guidance? That we should be able to offer so willingly or to grant unto you. Everything is yours. 
and you consider our gift unto you our breath of praise as a, of this sort. He says for all things, not some. The devil comes from you. The wicked shall then come from you. Evil come from Yah. Tav come from Yah. All things. All things. For all things come from you. And of you, of your own, have we given you. Even the breath in our body, it has been given by Yah. That's why we prepare our minds by sowing into it the fruit of Torah. I've got something for us, don't worry. He said, if I offer you praise, as you give me breath. If I offer you Torah, it's because you have imparted life in me. If my tears flow from my eyes, it's because you have all of my, my, eyes, my eyes, my wisdom, my understanding, and I cry. He said, everything belongs to you. What can we offer him but what is his? Even you belong to him. The wicked, the righteous, all belong to him. We sit before him with this vile, melancholy spirit, thinking we are great, we're not great. And then, for all that, he allow us to offer it so willingly, to open our mouths and say, Toda, and to sing to his name. Beautiful is his name. There's no other name more beautiful is the name. Of Yah, our Abba, I take refuge in the splendor name of Yah. Oh, my comfort comes from Yah through the power of Yahshuah. So I sing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not a faker, all right. Everything is yours. He said, for we were gear yeah, or strangers before you. We are those that travel sojourners as were all of our forefathers, our Avat. Our days upon the earth are as a shadow. You see a shadow and it's gone, isn't it? That's how our days are. Hey, but one thing I'm preparing for to sow the fruit of Torah in my mind, I'm preparing to Get up on out of here, one day you are leaving this place, young or old. You got to get it on up, oh, out of here. You're going someplace one day, oh, and listen. Getting ready to go to my precious home. That's where I'm getting ready to go. You're not going any kind of way. For life is like a shadow upon the earth and without permanency. For the skin worm shall eat your flesh. And your bones shall be bleached. Dry bones as thou zakin. Yaramayal told us dry bones can they live? Yet he shall cause those that are dead in your shoe, they shall rise first. There's no permanency. Yeah. And he tells us, oh yeah, my Abba. All this store, all that we have gathered, uh, have we prepared? Have we halats? We have prepared to build you a bayat uh, for your kadosh name, uh, it has come from your hand, uh, and all is yours. Uh, he has given us every substance to build uh, this house. Uh, he's given us Torah wisdom. Uh, he's given us messengers. Uh, he's given us his kindness and his love. Uh, and we have built some damn shabby holes. Uh, we built them upon sand. The houses are not built upon the stone of Sadiq. He's supplied everything. His testimony. His wisdom. 
And you tell me that he's going to sustain me by some damn gas or got some dry beans? Uh, you are silly. I made a statement the other day. I said, that's silly, and I'm not going to say how I said it. And my Achio Save, he began to chuckle, he began to laugh. Uh, I said, Yo Save, I didn't mean to say it like that, but he just, it was so humorous the way I said it. I didn't say it to be funny. But he says to me, man, that's. <laughs> No, I say, yo, I, I didn't mean it like that, my friend. And that's not how I meant it. Those were just the words that came out. And that's it. How did you say it? Well, I won't say how I said it. Well, you said something vulgar. Oh, don't be silly. Hallelujah. He has given us the fruit to sow in our mind to prepare, to build, be us, the house, the place where the Ruach HaKodash, the power of his mind, administer the greatness of his power. And we have hoarded every kind of wicked thing. You've hoarded stuff back 20 years ago. He said, they said, she said. You hold, still hold on to that damnable damnation that's going to damn you in hell. And that's just a fact. And yet you can maintain and hold the truth. There are folks that hold on to stuff 20 years ago. She did that. He said they did. You are wicked, jackass. You're not even a jackass because a jackass knows the master script. You don't tread out that, or you don't hold back the jackass because he treads some corner. He's lame it. That's why your house is raggedy as hell. That's why you don't have the beauty of the great, beautiful name of Yah in your forehead. That's why your mind is not on the truth of Yah. It's just the fact of the matter. You can resist, you can reject, but it is the truth. We are a sugula, we are a peculiar, we are a special people. Yeah. Quote, we are a special people unto Yah. We are peculiar. And so even in the marketplace, we should look peculiar. Not insane, because we have the beauty of that name, the light of that name. We have the light of Torah, Yoshua, and, and the Ruach caused that light to beacon. We are a city. We have lost the flavor of the saltness, and we are tough for nothing to be thrown out and trodden under the foot. And that's why the wicked trot us. That's why the wicked tell us these Walmart, Walgreen prophets tell us to store up. And the rich man says, I'm getting rich, baby. Bye bye. Create some kind of delusion. He brought a nation out into the wilderness and fed them with matter. What is this? And it did not sustain any kind of righteousness. It did not make them love him. We must eat the bread. As Joshua said, my flesh is bread indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He said, if you want to be a follower of me, a Talmudim, you must eat it and drink it. And when they consider what it would take, they all turn and walk no more. He said to the twelve, will you leave me also? And they all left him. We fed ourselves with such pilk. Our minds are in balance. I shall, my friend, to that. Holding nothing back. We're going to get to the bread of this, all right? You have granted everything, y'all, to prepare to build this house. He's given your shoe, he's given a living Torah. He's given the substance of Torah to build him a house. That when he comes, he doesn't want to find no damn fat back there, no oodles or noodles. He don't want to find no pork biscuits there. Your damn shrimp and lobsters. What are you saying? He doesn't want to find the filth. 
He wants to find a clean house that the man has been sown with the living Torah. That he may reside there, that he may take pleasure. That he may be pleased, Yisrael. Yeah, we got fat back grease on the walls. We got crackling dumplings everywhere. We have not prepared the house for him. Our minds do not embrace the love of that great name. We denounce the name of Jesus. I mean the name of Yoshua. We respect the damn name of Jesus. Yeah, those who get upset when I say damn Jesus. Damn Jesus. Damn Christ. Hood with me all those years uh, and the lies that was damned that Jesus. Yeah. is nothing but a damn figment uh, of the damn corrupt white mind uh, that has been created in the black I image. Mean, the black Jesus uh, doesn't give a damn about the white Jesus. Uh, and the damn white Baptist uh, doesn't give a damn about the black Baptist. Uh, that's just a fact. Yeah. Hell, you can make him any color you want. The Korean Jesus looked different than the black Jesus. And they all look like faggots. Long damn hair. The Baptist Jesus doesn't give a damn about the Methodist Jesus. The Pentecostal Jesus will kick the apostolic Jesus to hell. You got the horse wife going to the apostolic, and you got the feminine weak husband uh, that's going to the Baptist whole house. And yeah. hey, baby, baby, my Jesus ain't like your Jesus. Nah. His Jesus is a damn coward dog. Yeah. But your shoe is the right hand, he is the strength. Yeah. He is the might, he is the power, he is the nurturing of all mother, yeah. I'm going to house be divided strong. She's going to the Baptist whole house. She's going to the Pentecostal whole house. Produce weak men and rebellious women. It's just a damn fact of the matter. People don't want this real truth. You know, I could make a lot of money, my Akshimur, if I wanted to, but I don't damn money. Damn money. Can't be about money here. Damn it. They're going to cast their gold and silver into the street. It's not going to save you. These damn hawkers of silver telling you to buy gold and silver. These are dogs. These are children out of the bottom, the belly of hell. These men are drugstore. Walgreen, profiteering, uh, as though that they have great substance. Uh, these are weak, cowardly men. You must sow into your mind the seed of Torah. You must prepare yourself. You must halat. You must be invigorated. People got billions of dollars and they're not invigorated. They're not happy. They're those that own islands and they're not happy. There are those that have an entourage or a harem of women and they're not happy. There are those that go through men like they go through war and they're not happy. There are those that have millions of dollars worth of diamonds and rings and they're not happy. And you tell me, y'all telling us to prepare by buying gold and silver and preparing as a nation. We must prepare to build this house. And it begins with the chief cornerstone. You reject the power of Yeshua. You reject him telling you you're wicked. You're vile and you're unclean. You don't want no husband man like that. Amen. I don't care what you are, man. Be strong in your house. <clears throat> I don't care what you do. I don't care how you fail. I don't care how many times you fail. Yah will bring you to the light. You do not give the power to your wife to run things. That's a fact. You don't do that. You can love her wisdom on matters, but you are the final arbiter. These are weak boys today. Oh, you're going to do what I say or not? Stop that. Don't even do me like that. 
as a Jezebel spirit. And little heifer, you're not fine. Don't think you're fine. You're so insecure, you got to show your ass off your leg. You want everybody to look at you. You're not fine. You're insecure. I'm a man and I dress myself like a man. I cover myself. How about that? Can I proceed? Hallelujah. Again in verse 17, for I know also, Yama about that this is what Yah does. He say, I know that you, Bahan, I know you try. I know you try the heart. I know that afflictions try the heart. First Chronicles 29, 17, he says, uh, I know, Ayada, I've experienced also that Yah Ma'abad, that you, Bahan, you try, you test, you scrutinize, you examine the heart, the love. And you have pleasure in the Yosha, the Yoshia, the upright. He says, as for me, in the uprightness of my love, I will willingly, Hafiz, I know it pleases you. I will willingly offer all these things. And now have I seen with joy your people which are present here. So we offer this unto you willingly, Yahweh. We don't have to have the timbrels planned. We do it with a robust heart. He goes on in this powerful prayer as we prepare the house. We must prepare the beds. You can't prepare this house by putting back a Uros and noodles. Bubble gum and candy for the little ones. You must prepare this house by sowing into your mind, your heart, your mind, the fruit of Torah, the testimonies of Yah, the piku, the statues, the wisdom of Torah. You must have that sown into us, each of us. We have sown such folly into us that we don't get excited about Torah. We don't get excited about His name. His name is not beautiful. And the thing of it is, uh, we become so seared in our minds and our thoughts. Even the Torah doesn't convict us uh, and convince us that we're wicked. That we're wrong. We're not even convinced that we're wrong. We continue to do the same thing over and over. You're twisted in your mind, man. Yeshua is... My friend, how do you know that? Because he said, I call you no more of a dim, because a servant knows not what his master does. He says, I call you Reach, you're my friends to the end. I call you my friends. No greater love than that of a friend. No greater love. Friend loves at all time. We're not his friend. We don't give a damn about him. Don't call me. Immature man. Silly woman. As someone that texts me every week, They've never tried to critique me. They always text me on the telephone. And it must be someone that is Spanish speaking every week. Praise Yah because it is in a Spanish voice. Bless you, Reach David. Yabrak. Hallelujah. Every week, that's all they say. And there are times I can return the message. I will say simple words. Yah's riches and your sure. How much you rest upon you. Yabrak. They text me every week. And I get it on the lands line every week. Sometimes on Shabbat evening after the broadcast. And some after Shabbat every week. It's of great substance. Because undoubtedly the Torah has been sown, the fruit of the Torah. So we need the fruit of the Torah. We need the fruit of the Torah of that zira, the seed to be sown into our mind. <clears throat> As for me in the uprightness of my love, I will willing offer all these things. He says, and have seen with joy your people, which are present here to offer willing unto you. 
verse 18. O Yah, the sovereign master, the ruler, the leader of Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yisra'ya, our, uh, our fathers, our forefathers. He says, keep this forever in the intent of the thoughts of the heart, above all things. Remember this, their intention, how their hearts were prepared this day to offer. We must prepare our minds to sow into it the fruit of the Torah. He says, keep in mind, even when we do wickedly, the thoughts of the last uh, of the, your people. He says this, and halats, prepare, make strong, invigorate, prepare, prepare the heart, the love, the mind toward you. The only way our minds are going to be prepared toward Yah is that we must sow into it the fruit of Torah. You can get upset with me. You don't have to like my bodaciousness, the audacity that I speak with, because I care enough for you to tell you the truth. Because I will not compromise the truth, we get upset. I will not bend that for anyone. It's almost difficult to find what we call men today. Oof. And strong men that are invigorated, that understand the power. You, you know, it's amazing because when I was in the military, there are people that would call me and leave silly remarks and say things. But when I was in the military, there is no way in hell that the lieutenant uh, would be abrasive to the captain. He was afraid. And yet these juveniles today have no knowledge of Torah. They want to be abrasive uh, with the elders. They've been taught that. They've been taught that by a wicked mom and an insecure pappy. If we talk about weak pap and a wicked mammy, yes. you think a lieutenant is going to rise up against the colonel? Uh? He's going to sweat on his buttocks uh, when he stands there, make sure he's at attention right. Uh, and these cowards today, uh, I'm a first sergeant in this army. I'm a master sergeant. That means I've got longevity in this army. Master Sergeant, he has reached that pinnacle because he understands the, the military might and the power. He knows more than a captain. You don't become a general unless you have uh, traversed every plane. And these little weak jackasses today think that they're going to rebuke me. Go to hell, boy. I won't let them do that. No, I'm no captain or no lieutenant. I'm a master sergeant. Master sergeant, I do too. He has served the military. That's the highest rank you can go as an enlisted man. Yah has enlisted me in this military warfare, the spiritual warfare. Captain boy, he goes to school. He gets book learning. He doesn't know anything. I remember I was in the military, we had this lieutenant, he was a little boy, coming out of college. He didn't even have the physical agilities like those master sergeants. And I watched this little coward go off on the master sergeant one day, and those that had been in the military, they had been to Vietnam, they were there in my unit. This cat says to me, he said, man, that little weak coward boy, he says in Nam, we just shot his head off. He said, here it is, a master sergeant. This man got 30 years in there, and this little boy with not even two years in the military tried to uproot him in front of all people. And these little boys think they can uproot someone. They're silly. They're stupid and immature. And that soldier was upset because he seen that in Nam, and he saw many of them die because uh, you're not going to do him like that. This master sergeant, he has battle in the field. You have not battle in the field. Prepare. Halats. He said, prepare their hearts toward you. Our hearts must be prepared toward him, Yisraya. Gasoline is not going to do that. I can store all the big bread I want to. It's going to rot. It's not going to prepare my heart to love Yah. Prepare their hearts toward you. How does he do it? By sowing 
He raised up messengers to sow into us the fruit of the Torah. That's what he does. Prepare their hearts toward you. He says, and not only that, but to give Shalom, my son, give him a prepared heart. Give him a heart that is tomim, heart that is perfect. That, that heart, everything that he does, his actions and reactions are the dictates of Torah. It is brought alive by the ruach, by the living power of your mind. Give him a perfect heart. For what? To keep, to shema, to keep your mitzvah, the commandments. That's how we prepare our hearts, keeping the commandments. He said to keep your testimonies. We keep the testimonies of Yah. As they were singing, how I got over, whoa. How I got over, oh, I look back and wonder how I got over, how I got over, oh, see, got you. Mm. He said that they remember your testimonies and your, your epicude, your statues, for what? And to do, to fashion, to asa, to prepare, to fashion all these things. And to build the kingdom, the palace. We must prepare to build the power of that testimony. Of Yeshua HaMashiach. That they may build this palace. To which I have made all the provision. Hasn't Yah made all the provisions? He's given us a living truth. He's given us life today. We must prepare. We must halat. We must be invigorated. We must be equipped. We must be ready for the battle. That we may build the house, the palace, this place where the Ruach HaKodesh of Yah can dwell. And the mind of Yahshua administered by those things which the Ruach doesn't come to teach but ever heard and give light to it. It is the mind of Yah. Why? Because Yah is never going to denounce Yahshua. He's never going to take him out of his place. And these land dogs that say, Yah, talk to them, they're liars. Yeah. Liars! I talked to one the other day, and the person said, well, Yas will, uh, we'll see what happens. I said, what do you mean? It is Yas will. Well, he will guide my steps. I said, he's not going to talk to you from the heavens. The only way he's going to guide your steps is according to what Torah says. I said, my friend, the word willing or will, it means hafetz. What pleases Yah? I said, I know it's pleased to Yah. I don't have to pray to go see you. If you're afflicted, I come see you. I pray Yah give me guidance. I don't look for some kind of epiphany to say, well, Yah, do I go see your case? Give me what? These are stupid men. Well, I pray about it. No, I just pray Yah, your pleasure be in this visit to my Achim. My ark, that's what I pray. Yo, do I go see my ark? He's sick. Do we help him out? That's so silly. And people think they're spiritual that talk that way. And so when they run up to me, when they come into my presence, they, they get someone cut out of a little different cloth. Same cloth. But he doesn't talk like them. He has a better wisdom of Torah than they. Why, you think you're smarter than me? I'm smarter than you. I'm smarter than you. Yeah. I've been to college. That's why you're an educated fool. Yeah. You're silly and immature. I shall. All the richest people in the world, very few have college education. The ones got college education went in debt. Sure did. Mr. Gates dropped out of college. One of the richest men in the world. Most of the businesses in America are not started by college educated people. It robs you of your essentials and gives you this superficial arrogance to think you got something you got. Some sheepskin, you paid $130,000 for, you silly. 
I would have taken that $130,000, put it back. In 10 years, you would have had close to $200,000. Then I invested that. That's what I would have done. You silliest cats dung. That's what I said to Yosef. That's silliest cats dung, yo. So you're silly. You get out of college, two hundred thousand dollars in debt. Give me the two hundred thousand dollars. Give me two hundred. Send me two. Send me a thousand dollars. Someone send me a thousand dollars. I want to finish up today. All right. Hallelujah. We began by preparing our minds to sow into it Torah. You're not going to save. You're not going to deliver yourself. You're not going to highlight yourself by buying up food and staples to sustain you through a period of time. It's not going to do it. And I'll tell you what, you, you have very little finances to buy so much food. Uh, it is one thing about a situation like that, you tend to eat more. You like to eat every time you turn around, you're hungry. Because you sit around and you're restless. And that's just the truth. When a man works hard, he doesn't eat as much. He may eat improperly, but he doesn't eat as much. When a man works hard, when a woman works hard, she doesn't eat as much. I don't care what you say. But when you don't eat much, then you're always hungry. Because you're idle and you think about eating all the time. That's just the truth. Can I move on the Father? We must prepare. Hallelujah. I want to give us an account. This is, this is the only way. This is the sufficiency of our preparation here. And it's written from the narrative uh, of Shirak. You have the book Shirak. You that don't listen to it as I read it. Shirak chapter 2 verse 1. And this is something we don't do, Yisrael. It says, my son, if you come to serve Yah in the fear of Yah, if we really come to serve Yah in the Yare, the fear, the regard, the respect of Yah, first of all, he says, prepare your nephesh, your mind, the substance of you for trials of one's patience. We don't even prepare ourselves for trials. We're not prepared for what's coming upon this earth. We come to serve Yah, we must have fear, and we must prepare ourselves uh, for trials. Uh. So if I don't have no gas, walk. If I don't have no food, dig in the fields and find uh, the lamb's quarter and all of that. It'll make me think wise. I know what is edible. I'll find something. Uh. We must prepare our hearts for trials. He used the word nephesh, soul, doesn't he? We must spare the soul of the nephesh as the being of a man, as life would cause him to be invigorated, his mind, uh, the wealth of his substance, who he is. Uh, we must prepare ourselves, first of all, for trials. Uh, to be patient, to wait. Uh, how am I going to get out of this here? Shut your damn mouth. And be quiet. And just wait. I said, don't see anything. Shut up and wait. Be patient. Patience is one of the most beautiful virtues. And you will know that one is patient because they don't complain. Well, they did hard and she did that and he got under that and I don't have nothing here. You don't have a damn thing out there. I like this too. I like hearing this. And so what asked me, do you prepare I don't know how to prepare what I'm going to say. This is at lib. I'm reading from scripture, but this is no process of preparing before I come in here. Just the truth. I look for that one verse. It may take me hours to find it, and all of a sudden, there it is. No, that's right. And so that one I read from Tilium, David, this one, that was the one I look for. And everything else will fall in place. Hear this quickly. So if you're going to serve Yah in the fear of Yah, you must have Yah's fear to serve Him. You must know by the power of his creation who he is. You must have that in order to serve Yah. He said that we must prepare ourselves for trials. Many other afflictions of the Sadiq, but Yah delivered them out of them all. Yeah. It says not only that, but courage. And we must have the power to resist temptations. He tells us in the next verse to be sincere, to be ba, to be ba, to be pure, to be genuine. Are we just ask yourself that question. Are you truly genuine to your neighbor? If you're not, you can't love them uh, as you love yourself. The hypocrisy of our own speech to us, we're not genuine with ourselves. We're not genuine. We don't see ourselves the way we really are. 
We see ourselves differently, but you see me different. These cowards will call me. They don't see their juvenile, weak, subpar ways, but they can always tell me my ways. They tell me where I'm falling or failing, and yet they don't see their weak, cowardly ways. When someone does that to you one time, they're going to do it again and again and again. When men do me like that, I don't, they have no place with me. I've lived with this woman not 30 years, not 30, 36 plus years we've been married. I do terrorize the two, I'm a terrorist. No doubt about that. I am a terrorist. I am. I terrorize. And people look at you funny because you terrorize. I do terrorize it because I like the way she looks at me. How about that? I'm a terrorist. I am a terrorist. No doubt about it. How about that, my Zaki Yaramia? You like that, Akshim? All right, I'll move on then. That's enough liking. Hallelujah. Be sincere. This is what we must do in heart, in love. And then you must sat, you must assert, prepare, form, fashion your heart aright. And constantly endure. We must endure hardness as a faithful warrior, a soldier, a geba, a geba. We must constantly endure. We must constantly, we endure something for the moment and the next moment we are upset. Mothers have to endure their children, the tears and the cry. Just can't just get upset at the moment and began to wail and whack the hell out of them. The wife must endure the husband. The husband must endure the wife. My ach, my ach, we must endure each other. You think I sell out these faithful men for some kind of damn trivial trinket? You think I sell them out? You think I will put more on them than I will not take upon myself? You think I'm going to do that? I'm not a coward like that. Men that have stood by my side, you chokim, I don't give a damn how your little silly mind thinks. You think I will sell you out? You silly. That's all you know. I wouldn't sell out Yisraya for the friendship of a weak, cowardly boy or silly woman. Not me. Not me. You may. I will not. I will not sell you off for my natural brother. Not me. That despise my Abba and sell you out? I can embrace him but I can't embrace you? Not me. You can. I will not. Moving right along. Hallelujah. Set your heart right and constantly endure and do not be hastily or disturbed in time of calamity and affliction. React, you need to prepare. You, well, why am I disturbed? I'm not going to be disturbed in time of a calamity. My Torah tells me when the, when, when, when the calamity come upon them in Proverbs Mishli 1, uh, he said, then shall they call upon me. He said, but I'm going to mock them dogs. Uh, I'm not disturbed because of the calamities uh, and the ills that we think are ills that shall pursue us. Uh, I'm not going to be disturbed. Uh, I'm going to be constant. Uh, I'm going to be in season, out of season. I'm going to be ready at all time. Yeah. When the trial comes, prepare my mind uh, to sow in it, it the fruit of Torah. Whether it's rebuke, reproof, uh, correction, and long suffering, uh, whatever it may be, put it in me. Yeah. Put it in me. Put it in me. Yeah. Yeah. Whose mouth it comes out. I forgot what one of the little children said to me one day. I don't know if it was Nzeria Sipporah. She said something. It was just such truth. I wish I remembered. I wanted to tell you what she said to me and how she said it. It was a simple word, but it was so... I looked at the baby child and I said, ah, I like that. The child didn't know what the child said.
But it was right what the child said. It was true. And I was impressed with that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to this for you. Yah tells us here in Shirak 2 and 3. He tells us to Dabak. To cleave Yisraya. Dabak is to join oneself to. Yah has joined himself unto Yisraya. He tells us to cleave. To Dabak, cleave to Yah, to Him. Hold on to Him with the heart of truth. Hold on to Him with the mind of Sadiq. Hold on to Him. Hold on to His Torah. Hide it in your heart that you will not sin in the day of calamity, that you call Him unjust. And then you began to treason against him. You come against him. You must endure with all of your substance. You must endure. These are trials that we all shall be tried by. Cleave to Yah and do not depart. Why? That you may be honored at the end of your life. He tells us in verse 4, accept, acknowledge. Whatever is brought upon you, you take it cheerfully. I don't care what it is. I know your battles. Because your battles are mine. The way your heart weep, my heart weep. My constant prayer is more constant than your prayer. So we take it with cheerfulness. And it changes that you... And in changes... That humble you, be patient. He says, for gold is purified by fire, it is. You're not going to purify gold or silver any other way to get the dross out of by fire. An acceptable man. Acceptable men by Yah. He doesn't put anyone in the furnace of adversity and humility or shifla. An acceptable man unto Yah, he put them in the furnace of the fire. He had three young men that they were accepted by him. He had one that he put in the midst of the den of darkness of the lion or the airy. And then he had one he sent him down to the gates of hell. Sent him down where the powers of darkness could not captivate him at all. None whatsoever. With these small things that we encounter, I would have prepared my mind. And so into my mind, the power of the living Torah, the power of the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. If we are acceptable by him, Yahshua was acceptable by the Abba. And he went down into the furnace of adversities and trials and death and yet he overcome. Yisrael has got overcome. He has elected a nation, a people that is peculiar unto him. It is his hand. It is the power of his might whereby we're going to overcome. All he wants us to do is bought that. Damn it, we can't do that. We can't even trust him. And these jackasses, they trust no man because they don't trust Yah. They trust no man. They're so stupid. Yoshua gave gifts, he gave gifts unto the assembly. And they were men. There's nothing more like the, an acceptable man by Yah. He takes them through the fiery furnace. That his words are seasoned. We dishonor that, we disrespect that. And even the wicked regard their men. That those that were missed Obama, the man that received the Nobel Peace Prize, and yet he ready to bomb the hell out of those little brown babies over there. Yet there are those that call themselves liberals, Mr. Kerry, that, uh, that staunchly did not want Mr. Bush to do what he did. Uh, yet they're ready to bomb, and they call themselves liberals. Uh, they're damn dogs. Yeah. Yet when it comes to the messengers of Yahweh, we think that uh, we can run roughshod, we can say what we want to, uh, we can treat them any way we want to. You're not going to deal with me that way, boy. Yeah. You may do that with someone else, but not me. We have no regard for them. What was Shirak? Was he a man? Do you believe what he said here? What was that V? Was he a man? You trust what he said? You trust he was led by the Ruach? 
And yet we're living in a time that is much more turbulent. You can't believe that you're the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We are stupid. We are a dumb nation of people. That's why the world mock us. You worry about some damn fancy frock and having your ass out. Your titty nippers where everybody can see that. You want to dress like a little effeminate fag, man. Dress like a man. For gold is purifying the fire of accept a fire, comma, an acceptable man in the furnace of adversity. Uh, and shifla, men that God accept, he, he calls them to traverse the furnace of trials, accusations, rejection. He tells us this, trust. I will trust in Yahweh. Will trust. Uh, and bring back that old Baptist spirit, doesn't it? Uh, and yeah, I will trust. Uh, and yeah, and dear and that's the only time I won't trust him. That's what we should say. Uh, I will trust. I could get the Baptist moving with that. I'll go on that tomorrow. Oh, I'm going to trust. I don't have to hit the note right. I don't have to get the note right. I don't have to get the note right. That's all I have to do. Yeah. Yet he commands us to trust. But talk to have great confidence. To rest in the assurance of what has been sown in your mind. See, trust in Yah. And he shall. Ah, ah, zah. He shall secure us. Succor us. He shall help. He shall help you. He commands us to make our way straight. And we should have tikvah in him. Make straight as Torah commands us your crooked paths. You must make straight. You must get straight and right. Make straight and hope in him. He says to you, you who fear Yah, wait for his raham. Wait for his kindness of his mercy. And don't turn aside least you fall. When we turn away from Torah, we fall. We turn trying to save our flesh, we're going to die. When we try to store up tens of thousands of gallons, where are you going to drive to? Tell me, why are you going to drive to the store when there's no food there? What do I need gas for? Well, if I can't go anywhere, then let me just pray. Work and pray and don't have to worry about nothing because there is no power, no electricity. Why worry? We are silly. We're easily to be captivated. We are so easily because we're so lustful and so silly. And that's why men can talk that way. Well, you know, you better get some gas. You better get some food stocked up. That's how silly men talk. And people buy it. Oh, you hear Prophet Johnson? He said you got to get some gas. And baby, I'm going to Walmart. You know they got that peanut butter and jelly on sale. They got them ooze noodles, all that pork fat in, in those romaine noodles, and you're still eating them. They got them ooze noodles, baby, and I'm going to eat me some of them. And, and, yeah, I'm gonna, I'll give me. They got some of them pig feet in jars, too. I'm going to get me some of them, too, now. You don't trust y'all. You must hope in him. We that fear him. You don't trust Yah, you're going to fall. You who fear Yah, you trust in Him. The reason we don't trust Yah because we don't fear Him. Because we have not allowed Him to prepare our heart. He has not prepared our hearts by sowing into it the testimony of His Hamashiach. And your reward will not fail. You who fear Yah, 
tikva, a hope for tov, for everlasting joy and mercy. He gives us an account in Shirak 2.10. He tells us to think, consider the ancient generation and see whoever, whoever Yisrael, tell me, whoever trusted in Yah and that was put to shame, show me. We trust in everything, we are put to shame. We are ostracized, we are rejected. Whoever trusted in Yah, show me in the Torah that they were ever put to shame. It's not so. Or whoever preserved in the fear of Yah, they were a zab, they were forsaken. Show me whomever Yah preserved with this fear in their heart that he forsook them. He didn't even, he didn't even with one, he commanded one. When he said, you go down into Yericho, I give you the land, I give you the city. And there was a whore there. There was a whore named Rehab. She trusted in the messengers of Yah and she prepared a house. Even a whore knew how to prepare a house. And the promise was granted unto her. Even a two dollar whore can prepare a house. We're not even a good whore. Yeah. She prepared a house. And she put the scarlet string on. And when the messenger came, they killed. And yet they said, that house is prepared. Yeah. It is halats. It has set a defense. We know that one. And even with the holotry that's around our mind, he still sins. His ruach, he calls us to gather two or three in his name that he may pour out the riches of his blessing. And we don't have the sense to understand that. That we have failed at everything and we're near the gates of hell because we don't fear Yah. We can't hold anything unrighteous in our bosom and say we fear Yah. And that's a fact. Who have been preserved by the fear of Yah that he has forsaken? Or whoever called upon him and was overlooked? It's our sins that cause us to doubt. It's our sins that cause us to be double-minded. He goes on in this rhetorical, verse 11. He said, for Yah is full, not half. He is full of roham. He is full of mercy, compassion, and kindness. He is a long-suffering one. He's very pitiful toward his people because he knows that we're nothing but flesh and we're weak. That's why he calls those men that are acceptable to go to the furnace of the fire. He forgives your sins, Yisrael, and he saves in the time of affliction, in the time of great agony. He saves the nation of his people. Woe be to the fearful and the timid hearts of the Levim and the slack hands and to the sinner who goes two ways. You're double minded. You trust the day and you doubt tomorrow. You got confidence and you go your damn Jesus way the next day. You can't go two ways. Double minded man is not stable in all of his ways. You can't go two ways. There's only one way. There's only Ichad, one. There's one Abba. One Amun, strength of knowledge of confidence. And what he must sing. We must go down in the power of your shoe. We must have that name in us. There's only one way, one direct. Woe to him that is uh, yeah, faint-hearted, timid, effeminate, what the renewed covenant called the Brit Hadassah. When you're faint-hearted, you know why you're faint-hearted? Well, I don't know, baby. There's only one reason the explanation is here, because there's no trust in the eye. You don't trust her. You're a damn liar. What are we going to do? Get on your wicked knees, man. Bow down, you lazy heifer. You find a faint-hearted man, weak, insecure. They have no bodak trust in you. He says to them, uh, woe, he says, woe to him that is faint-hearted. 
for it has no trust. You can say what you want to. The faint of heart have no trust in Yah. Therefore, it will not be sheltered and defended. Yah is not going to defend that. He's not going to defend you. He's not going to shelter you. He's going to give you over unto hell. That's why we must begin with the preparation as a nation to sow into our minds the Torah, the fruit of the Torah, the great sweetness of the rewards of the Torah. Woe to you that have lost patience and endurance. What will you do when Yah shall visit and punish you? What are you going to do? You have no confidence in Yah. You can endure the smallest of things. I don't have this. I don't have that. There is a world that doesn't have uh, nearly what we have today. Uh, that can eat and sleep and lay on a bed. Uh, you can go. I, I remember when I was in Kenya, East Africa. And I watched the Messiah warriors. They had not a damn thing. Uh, but they animals. And they didn't butcher them at will. Uh, they saved them and they preserved them. Had rags on them. Uh, and one of the most fierce beasts. Of the plains. Fierce. That little skinny thing. And the lion can recognize that red. Drab of rags. That they wear. Because the Messiah would kill a lion. They would kill them. As part of their manhood. As part of their strength. And yet we will not destroy this. Evil intent. And the reason we don't do that because we're not willing to prepare. We don't want to sow into our mind the things that will invigorate us. And the only thing that's going to invigorate us is the Torah truth of Yah. Yeah. Shirag 2.15. He says, they that fear Yah will not disobey. Will not mara. Will not be rebellious. Mara, they will not disobey. They will not be rebellious. They will not forsake Yah. They will not be contentious. So, we are disobedient people, are we not? Because we don't trust Yah. They that fear Yah will not disobey His word. We will not rebel against His word. Woe unto us because we rebel, we get answer we get upset we get angry they will not rebel against his word and those that love him will keep his ways we that love Yah, we will walk in the direct the way of Yah. that's the way that seems right unto man all of our ways seem right they're evil ways and we find the end of those ways it brings death there's no love for Yah. we die in our walk and those that disobey Yah because we don't trust Yah, that's the reason why. We have not prepared our hearts to sow into it uh, the fruit of the Torah. We have not. They that fear Him will seek His approval and pleasing to Him. Uh, and they that love Him shall be filled with the Torah. See, when you love Yah, you're going to be filled with the Torah. You're going to be filled with the Torah. What are we filled with, Yisrael? Yah, I ask you that. What are you filled with today? Tell me. What are you filled with? What do you feel with? But a man loves Yah and fears Yah, he's filled with the Torah. He meditates upon the word of Yah, the Torah of Yah, day and night. He takes his delight in Torah. When a man loves Yah, he's filled. When a woman loves Yah, she's filled with the Torah. We're filled with every kind of damn folly. We're filled with every kind of silly way. That's us. It's the truth. Thank you, my friend. Did they fear Yah? This is it. Shirak, tap, chapter 2, verse 17. They that yare, they that tremble, fear, reverence Yah, will prepare their hearts. You tell me to buy some fat back and grease and oil, some pinto beans, where do I get $20 from? Oh, what am I going to season them with? Talk to me, you all, you, you that are cooked. You don't, you just don't want no pinto beans. You got to have a ham hock in that bad food. Talk to me. You got to have a turkey neck bone in there. Don't sit here all silly. You can eat the ham hocks, you would. I don't tell me that. I've eaten too many beans with ham hocks in them. Smoke neck bones, it gives it a different flavor. Don't sit here like a hypocrite. Stop it. 
Turkey may be all right, but nothing like that. Neck bone. All right. Nothing like that ham honk. Let's get real. So you won't complain that the beans, uh, beans do not, uh, but beans ain't not got no seasoning in it. Put away that unclean food from your diet. The ham, the hawks, and the pork chops is wicked. The shrimp, the lobsters, it's wrong. They that fear Yah, see that's what I'm going to prepare. My leva, my lev, my heart. They will prepare, they will halats. They will cause their mind to be equipped, to be invigorated, to be strong, to be ready for the battle. That's where it began to see it. They will prepare their heart and they will humble themselves before him. That's what they will do. They will humble themselves. Well, you don't humble before me. You don't have anything to say, man. You, you're so juvenile. You think you got something to say. Wise man, he always did, he ponders. You don't have anything to say. I had someone to say to me that I should sit down and just be quiet and let the Zarkane have his. Well, the Zarkane doesn't want me to sit down. No, see that? You need to sit down. And by the way, I think you go to the gym too much. Man, you, you tell me. I can't go to the gym after I work hard all day. I work hard. Listen, one day in four hours, two days combined, I moved over 30,000 pounds of sand with a shovel. 30,000. That's a lot of sand. That box right there. And so the next day, my friend helped me. Well, of course, I can get off three shovels before most men get off one. Just the way I work. Because I didn't want to put no burden on him. I said to my Isha, you know how much money I, I mean, I've had to pull a piece in, a dollar here. She looks at me. I said, I got that much just in the sand. She looks at me. I says, for my babies. I said, I want to ask you a question. If you saw a pair of shoes on the internet, one for $50, one for 70 and one for 60 and you know the expensive shoes, would you buy them? Or if I had the money, I won't spend over 100 I said, okay. So that's what they mean to me. I will trust. I will trust. I watched that boy last night. He says to Seria Sepora, oh, this is for girls. This is not for me. He climbs up on that swing out there, and that fruit head go boom. Wow. He's already jumped off the top. I can you imagine if I put him out in the sand right there? What is he going to do? He's going to be a fruit head. But of course, it's for the girls. He gave it all for us. Everything. Everything. He didn't hold back a thing. Nothing at all. We must have this preparation and prepare our hearts. Halats. And every day as we sow the fruit of Torah into our minds, we will be invigorated. Yeah. We'll be invigorated. We'll be energized and ready. Yeah. Not every man has that ability to extrapolate and to speak of the depths of Torah. I want to show you one quickly. In the book of Ezra, first Ezra. In the book of Ezra. And I want to give us a descriptive of any true messenger, what they will do for the people of Yah. Ezra 1, 7, 6, and then I want to drop down the first 10. Here it is here in the book of Ezra. And we understand that at this time as Yisra Yah were returning to Yerushalayim, he was the one that Yah had ordained. As he had worked with the mighty messenger Nehemiah, as they began to prepare the house. But look what this man's substance was. First Ezra 7, 6. It says, this Ezra went up from Babel, Babel, the place of confusion. And it says here now, look at the street of this man. He was here. He was ready. He was a man that was prompt. 
He was precise. He was skilled. He was a ready stride in the Torah, not in the damn uh, Wall Street Journal, not in these filthy magazines they have, uh, these harlots of Hollywood when you go to the grocery store, the inquire and all of that. There are those that love reading that damn trash. You tell me you love young, you fill your mind with such stupidity? These naked holes that they have on there? You know, my days, as I began to grow, it was a shameful thing for a young girl to have a child out of wedlock. These whores have babies every day. They have one about three or four different men. Now. And then they gloat in that. They, they, they esteem that. Uh, oh, don't you know that so-and-so got a baby by this man? She's pregnant by this man. That nasty whore, Harry, what was it? The, the, the woman, the, uh, what's her name? Uh, Haley Berry. This whore spitting out babies like flies. Oh, look at her body. She is so scrumptious. The whole get everything sucked out. She get everything cut off. I will. How do you know that? Because as you, I can turn and see in the newspaper what, what it said about the whole. I will not even waste my time reading an article on this whore. And yet in my days, it was a shameful thing. And now it's honored. It's extinct. Or it's a coming out party because your son is a damn faggot. I saw an article the other day, I didn't read it, that Michael Jordan's daughter said it's a coming out thing. She's a, she's a damn lesbian butch bull dagger slut. And we think that's wonderful. And we'll look at, look at that and say, oh, she is so beautiful. She's a dog. You raise a son and he tells you he's a faggot? You raise a son and he tells you he's a, he's a faggot? You let him in your house with another man, you are a dog. He could come to my house. Yeah. Why don't you ever contact me? I mean that. You got a butch bull dagger daughter kissing on a woman? Get out of my face, you dog. Well, you got to love everybody. You don't even love you, Jezebel. Telling somebody how to love someone. He was a ready scribe, it says. He was a strive. He was ready. He was more here. He was a strive in the Torah of Moshe, which Yah, the sovereign ruler of Israel, Yah had given. Yah gave the Torah of Moshe, not Moshe. And the king granted him all, not some, but everything that was needed is Yah, Yeshua, our king. Yeah. Yah has granted us all we need to build the house and to prepare our minds to fear him and to serve him. Yeah. Give him everything he needed. According, why be according to the hand of Yah, his Abba was upon Ezra. When his hand is truly upon his nation, nations will tremble at our feet. We have become so wicked, we don't even consider our ways. And that's just the truth. We laugh it off as though it's something funny. It's not funny. I know I'm going to die. The child that shall come out of her womb soon. It's going to die. As soon as it comes out, death begins to work. That little baby that sucked the titty of the mama is going to die. That little boy that sucked mama's titty, that one that sucked mama's titty, they all are going to die. We're fools to think we're not. Your life is like a vapor. Smoke is nothing but vanity. You think you're going to continue your ways? Come on, what are our ways producing? Nothing. You're not going to get by, Yisrael. And that's just a fact. Now look at this man, Ezra. Look at him in verse 10 of 1 Ezra 7.10. It says, for Ezra, he had prepared. He was firmly established. How? Because he sold into his mind. It says in Ezra 7.10. It says in Ezra 7.6. It says that Ezra, he was a mochir. He was a skilled stride in the Torah. We must sow into our mind, Yisrael, Torah. We don't sow into our mind buying guns and buying uh, 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 all kinds of things to, uh, to sustain us. He was already striped in the knowledge of the Torah. He has sown into his mind the fruit of Torah. As I read in the beginning with Baruch. As I began this teaching with Javi when he says, Yah, deliver me, or to invigorate me, halats, that I may stand against the opposition of my enemy, that I may stand in the midst of the battle because I trust you. I trust you, Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. 
He says uh, that in Ezra 17, for Ezra had prepared uh, his love. What did he prepare his heart to do? It says to seek to Darash. He prepared his heart to inquire, to, res to resort to, to inquire of Yah, to, uh, to seek what? The Torah of Yah. And he sought it with carefulness. He sought it uh, with wisdom of the Torah. He prepared his heart to seek the Torah of Yah. And not only that, but to do it or to fashion himself, to prepare himself uh, and to do it and to teach it uh, and to teach in Yerushalayim uh, the statutes and judgment. He prepared his heart. See, if the false prophet or the false prophet is when they call me, and if they direct me to things that will prepare my heart to obey the instructions of Torah, I can buy what they say. But don't call me and tell me to buy gas or, or to buy silver or to buy gold. Because do I tell that to a poor sister there in Ghana? I had a precious man to call me from Ghana. He said, Re, I found you. I, I, I'm an American living in Ghana. I've been here. I, I married my wife. She wanted to stay here. And he says, I, I can't find nobody here that uh, serves you. I say, my friend, I hear from Ghana all the time. There are many that have served God. It's amazing that the arrogance uh, of this Christian who has taught us uh, that we have to go into every nation and teach somebody the ways of Yah. And we are the most vile, wicked people upon the face of the earth. Uh, we are vile people. And why do they not come to this country to teach us? Uh, we are such an arrogant, grandizing people. We think everybody's lost. Uh, and we are the damn lost ones. Uh, we got to go everywhere and, spread, everywhere and spread our damn lies uh, as though that we have some magnificent truth uh, and we don't even set our hearts to seek Torah. And it's a damn shame, Yisrael. Yeah. That's what we have been taught by this wicked system uh, that we are going to evangelize and do the world. You're not going to do a damn thing. You're not even right. How are you going to turn the hearts of the children that are evil back to the Most High? That's why these Walgreen prophets don't like me. That's why these dollar mart, nothing over a dollar, they don't like me. Their words are not worth 50 cents. Oh, I love you and then tomorrow you're going to reprove me with such scaling? Reproof and I've done you no wrong? Go to hell, coward. You're talking about me? I wouldn't even waste my time talking about you. I have a house that I'm concerned about. Weak boys. They're weak, man. I like strong men. I don't care if he's 90 years old. I like men. I got a thing for men. I like strong. I like men. I don't like boys now. When I say that, I don't like effeminate. I like my little young men. They're boys. I thump their heads. Had him singing the other day. He's about as stiff as a washboard. I will trust you. Y'all bless you. Y'all bless you. Y'all. I can do better than that. That's, you should have seen him, my Emma. Don't. He just... Oh, yeah, I love you, yeah, I love you. Boy, you can do better than that. Yeah, I love you for saving me today. Oh, I love you. Yeah, oh, I don't care what you say about me. This is me here. You don't have to do it. I'm going to do it until I die. When I get old, I'm going to do it. That's a fact. I would have closed in a moment. He wanted to teach the Israelites the statutes or the hook, that which has, Yah has prescribed for us. He has not prescribed, no one Torah I can find, where he tells me to buy gas. Now he said, is the garden is overproductive? Store it up. Last two years, our gardens have not been overproductive. My Raphael said to me, every green that we get this year, we're going to make sure we freeze it. I know you are. Because I've labored up there in the garden. All of a sudden, we get all the rain, and now it's no rain. Putting all that drip on there just doesn't do what? That stuff comes from above. Different ball game. No rain, hot, dry. So we do that, but that's not going to sustain us. They came out of Misraim with much. And hell, it wasn't six months, three months, they were hungry and didn't have enough. You start eating beans every day, you get sick of eating beans. You got gas everywhere, you get mad. And that's just a fact. I don't say nothing to be funny and silly. I'm not silly. It's time to be sober. We've laughed enough. 
Hell, it's time for us to get serious and our accountants present a soberness and a vigilant look. Hallelujah. 140. I want to read a few more things. In the midst of all of his great agony, there was one by the name of Zephah, your friend. And they bruised him badly, didn't they? Is Yoshua our friend? And yet he reproves us and rebukes us and he tells us our wicked, sadistic ways. And so in the midst of all of Eob's great trial, Job, there was one by the name of Zephah. They were friends. These were friends of his father. You know, I have figured it all out one day. I've got to look at that again. It was like that these men were like 160, 68 years old. They were not young boys. They had experience. They had sat in the gate with Eob's father. That's why I always say to the Zachim, wise men, if we have such plethora of wisdom, we should always, the elders always sat in the marketplace in the gate, and their wisdom spoke afresh to those that passed by. And those that were passing by, they would sit and just enjoy, and they would just sit with nobody looking and just enjoy the beauty of their speech and what they were saying. They would just sit there and just listen. That's what they would do. The wisdom that they spoke with, that's the power of a zakim. Not of this fallen frivolity. When they speak, they speak with great volume. They sit in the market. That's the way it should be among Israel. Yeah, there's teaching every day. Yeah. Oh man, sit, sit down, boy. Let's 20 minutes. And he teach him in the knowledge like Ezra from the Torah of Yah. So the one by the name of Zophar, this great friend of Eob, he speaks to him in Eob, Job chapter 11, verse 13. This is what he says to this man. He says, if you want to understand the dynamics of the great Berechah, the riches and the blessings of Yah, he said, look at this, Eob. He says to Eob, Job, the Job, was he in Eob, was he in great trials of perplexities? Was he not agonized? Were there not pains associated with that? Whereby even his skin, his flesh, the, uh, the putri of the pus that flowed from him, and this is what this man says to him. Who wants to hear that? Baby, I don't want to hear that. I'm sick. There are folks that would say that. I remember before my natural brother died, I was ignorant. I didn't know the power of Yah. But ask him, have you considered the living Torah of Yah? He says to me before he died, before his brain was dead, no! What I dropped this way, and the other one, dropped the other way. And it wasn't but a few moments, his breath, when he began to breathe, it was just this horrid smell. It was a smell that was just putrefied. You couldn't stand it. Two young doctors came and said, he's dead. If he lives, he'll live like this the rest of He'll never come out of this. Brain just went, bzzz, and that old thing that what we call the heart just go, boom, 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 boom. It's almost like when you cut a chicken's head off and just flop, just flop. They, they killed the rattlesnake the other day. That's, I mean, that was a big rattlesnake. The thing had nine rings around it, the tail. That was a big snake. It, it, I don't want to get that, that snake was that wide. That's the truth. That was a big snake. I, I mean, everybody was just amazed. Just, <laughs> it had nine rings. And so you could hear the rattle. I took a stick and just, you hear the rattle? It's a big snake. I said, boy, he has had his share of rats and under that tin over there. It make me get a little leery when I go to get the tin out of me. Beat that tin a little bit and get him out of there. Yeah! You go over there tomorrow, beat that tin. They got to go. That hits you. You're going to do more than sing old Dixie on that one. You coming up out of there. If that hits you, if that hit you, you're going to have to run more than to mama. And I don't want to mess with him. As long as I got something to reach out and touch him. I got something longer than him because I know I don't care how he curls up. He can't strike no further. Just give me a stick. I, that's all right. I got you. Give me a stick. Give me something where I can reach his head. I got him. If I th he can't, as he starts running, turn around and say, I'll get you. No, boy. You run for me, I know I got you. And I'm going to split your head wide open. But that was a big snake. Thick. Big. Fat. You know he had eaten his share of rats and small. He said, I have lived. It was nothing like that. Old truck, was it? Y'all put the truck on him? Yeah. You even wonder if he had crawled up through the... When you... 
Okay. Brave man. I went down the road one day and I was on the cart and I hit that was many years ago I hit this rattlesnake. Said, Whoa, did he crawl up through? I didn't see him. You wonder how he crawled up through. Got up in there and crawled. I don't want him on me. I'd rather see him and have me a stick. I'd rather have a stick and take his head off. But that was a big snake. Big. Big. Full of action too. See, that's the way the nature of Yisra'ya is. It's always ready to strike out at Yah. But this man speaks to this man in the midst of all of his agony. If Yah tells you you're wicked in the midst of your agony, what you going to say? Let me show what, Eob, what, what Zophar said in Eob 11.13. He said, first of all, if you prepare your heart. Is that what he says there? Yes. Eob 13, 11.13. He said, if you prepare your love and stretch out your hand toward Yah, he said, get your heart right, stretch your hands out. He said, if iniquity be in your hand, put it far away from you. And let not evil injustice dwell in where your tabernacle. He said, you ain't that right now. I know you're right, but come on now. This word is for you. He said, don't let evil dwell in your tabernacle. For then shall you nasa, you shall lift up. He said, you shall lift up your face without spot. He's not coming for one that is with spots and blemishes. He said, without spot, yes, you shall be steadfast and you shall not fear. Why? Because you shall forget your misery. Even in the midst of all misery, you look up. We'll forget all of our misery. We look at the misery and we become more miserable. He said, you shall forget them. He says, and I want you to, Zaka, remember it as water passing away. That's what it's like. You get these hearts right, our hearts right. That's what it would be like. Y'all never sends a messenger to do but one thing, to prepare us. I want to close with this last. As Zakin Yerabi always said, I, I've skipped quite a bit of scripture here, okay? But well, you know what, my Zakin, when the person called me, I said, I know I've taught on preparation, many different variants. So I went to my archives and I saw a message that in 2010 I began to pair this. I never preached it. I said, that's all right. It'll be different than the other ones. I've never taught this in 2010. I said, okay, I'll look at that. Ah, that's going to be easy. I can, can go on Friday night. Don't have to worry about a thing. I'll be rested and sharp. I want to close with this here. And this prophecy is also in the book of Yeshaya. There's much more. But it says in the book of Lucas, this is the power of a true messenger. It says in the book of Lucas, Luke 1, 16, it tells us, and many of the children of Yisraeli shall he turn, this messenger, Yochahan, he shall turn to, the, to Yah, their Abba. It says this, and he shall go before him, this messenger, and the messengers must go in the ruach of the power of Elijah, Yachahan did. What? To turn the Levi, the Levim, the heart of the Avat to the children, and the disobedient of the wisdom, and the disobedient to the wisdom of righteousness. We are disobedient. He turns our hearts, that's what a true messenger does, to the Sadiq, to the righteous of Yah. For what? To make ready a people prepare for Yah. Now I ask you a question, how is gas going to prepare me for Yah? Hell is going to make me want to go to Walmart and Dollar Mart. Talk to me. I got to go out for a ride. I shall, my friend. So how is gas going to make me prepare my heart or prepare ready a people for Yah? That's what it's about. And the only way we're going to be prepared, made ready of people for Yah is by sowing the fruit of Torah into our bosom. So I don't receive your prophecy, my friend. Sell that down there in Belize. Because the main industry of Belize is tourism and a little farming, agriculture, and small business. There's not a lot of money in the country. I would prefer you telling that to the people of Belize instead of telling me. And I refudiate it. I reject it. Every word. And I don't apologize. This is what the people are buying. They won't buy this, but they'll buy those lies. They won't buy what I say. <laughs> May Yah's riches rest upon Kul Yisraya. You that are listening, send an offering, help us. Send your tithes and offerings here. Your house is being blessed. You're not going to buy this. Uh,
from Walmart. You're not going to get this from Dollar Mart. You may get a dollar's worth from T.D. Jakes, but you're not going to get this. May the riches of Yah rest upon you all in Yahshua's name. Yah barak. Shalom, Yisra'ya. Strong, beautiful word, Yisra'ya. It was a delight to my love. I garnered much from that. Totally, Yah, for that, Yisra'ya. Hallelujah. You know, we as a people, it's a shame that we do not give honor to where honor is due. I'm a young man. I give honor to where honor is due. We let Yahshua, Yahshua shine. Is the reason why I say that. Because this man's been a, a va. He's been a father to me. Both in the things of the Ruach and teaching me things as becoming a young man. And I'm not going to discount that. Hallelujah. And I told Yahweh for him. Hallelujah. We as a nation, as a people, need to appreciate those that instruct, those that teach, those that rear us and bring us up in Yahshua, Hamashiach, because without those, we would not be where we are today, Israel. Without Yahshua, we would not be, be where we are today. Without Dawid and, and, and Samuel, we would not be where we are today. So I give Todah. Unto the Zakain, unto the Rayak, those that stand in the knowledge of this truth and that have stood strong, that their light, their beacon, has been a strength to my life and to my beacon, that I may shine in Yahshua HaMashiach. No light of my own. Hallelujah. But it's only through the obedience and through the, the, the labor of the men of Yahweh. Hallelujah. And I told you all for that. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. This beautiful day Yahweh has made. We shall rejoice. Hallelujah. And be glad in it. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Told you all. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, I do told you, Barak, you for this day that you have made, this beautiful Shabbat. This covenant, Abba Yahweh, you have made with Israel. Yahweh. We have labored, Abba Yahweh, these six days. You have given us this day that we should rest. That we should rest also in the beauty of your Torah and Yahshua HaMashiach. That we have laid all at his feet. Hallelujah. We told you for that, Abba Yahweh. Take those that have come from near and afar home safely. Those that have listened by via of live stream. That their hearts have been strengthened and enlightened today. And in all things, Abba Yahweh, we give you Toda. And for the Dhamma Yahshua HaMashiach, we give you Toda in all things. In Yahshua's precious name, we do pray. Hallelujah. 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 Yabarako Yisrael. Hallelujah.